A draft a day keeps the FBL doctor away. Hello, FBL doctor here. And today I am really saddened to diagnose you with the big red arrow. And this is the all out attack draft. Ah, terrible. No one ever wants to hear that news from the FBL doctor, no. So we best keep on grafting and drafting until we find the right team for you. So today we have the all out attack draft. Is is is. Whoa, 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 sorry, sorry. I just can't help myself, right? I just want to go out and attack. As this team is heavily, heavily focused on the attack, going for all of those golassos. So let's actually get our magnifying glass out, is it? And analyze the team itself, and then chinwag about it to see if it's an actual good idea, is it? Uh, let's have a look. So what we got here in this extra cheeky draft is a backline weaker than my immune system after a litre of Asda Value Vodka. Yeah, it's that bad. <laughs> Honestly, a small gust of wind could probably blow this defence down. It's really not good, is it? No, no, no. <laughs> With that containing a 4.5 million goalkeeper, who could be anyone, and also 4.5 million defenders, who also could be anyone. But in this team here, I've gone for the back man in goals, as I feel like he actually has a higher ceiling than the likes of, like, a Sanchez. So can I say I'm trying to attack more points? Okay, that's maybe a bit too much of a stretch here, yeah. God, if I try and keep stretching that far, I'm going to pull a hamstring. <laughs> And then the four defenders I've gone for are four attacking defenders. Uh, they're all fullbacks at least, okay? But also could get all of the clean sheets as well. These including an Arsenal, Brighton and Leeds player in here. All teams that on their day could keep a clean sheet against anyone, right? But they also have that attacking potential to attack it a bit more, right? As you know, the whole point of this is trying to increase that goal threat and just attack. Attack, 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 attack. But then we move up to the rest of the team where all the juicy bits are happening. Oh, yes. Like, honestly, my left nipple is already hard thinking about it. Oh, it's just amazing. As we have a Marcella, Marcella, a Bruno Fernandes, a go on, my son, and a Rihad Mahrez. Ah. Salah and Bruno are obviously, you know, part of the template, being the big boy premiums most people have, and most people can trust, you know, not just for all the points, but mostly for your Captain Dino as well. But then there are some other people who are being teased with, like, a son, or maybe even a Mahrez in there as well. Mainly because son could be the main goal scorer and penalty taker if Kane leaves the Spursy, and even if he doesn't, he's still very good as well, where he will be playing the likes of Watford and Palace in game week three and four, so very good not just to have, but maybe even for captain there, along with Amarez in here, who will be very likely to start the season for the Man Cities, as a lot of their wingers are not back yet. They had a very long summer playing for their country, so Amarez, ah, oh, he's just kicked back, chilling, probably playing Fortnite or something, when he, if I play. <laughs> so when he plays the likes of Norwich in game week two, Oh, yes. <laughs> like, honestly, he could be a captain in there, and who will have him unless they start with him? Uh, no one. <laughs> so that could definitely turn a few of you on there. Uh -huh. But the best part about this is that you now have four kind of expensive boys in there, so it might actually be quite a bit easier to be flexible with your team, because uh, it's a lot harder to get up to the premiums, but it's a lot easier to go down from the premiums, right? Like, if a Havits, a Grealish, a Sancho, or a Pepe, or any of these mid price midfielders were, start doing very well, or you just want them in, with most people's templates team, the only only way they can do that is if they drop a Salah and a Bruno, but maybe you don't want to do that. So with this, you could still drop one of them, but now you have the option if you want to drop one of the other fellas instead. As you don't want to be forced into selling your best players when you don't want to just to get in some others, right? No, 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 no one should ever be forced to do anything, all right? We all have the right to consent. Yes, keep it that way. <laughs> because what I see in a lot of teams, uh, including my current draft, I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but a lot of people are spreading out their money just like butter, properly spread everywhere, which could be a concern long term because like I said, if you are trying to get in some of these mid-price midfielders, you are going to have to sell a Salah or a Bruno or end up trying to make like three or four transfers around your team just to fit in one player. Like, it's quite hard to get around. So if you go for a team like this in game week one, you can just pick and choose whoever you want, whoever's doing well to stay and then drop down some of the other ones to anyone you want. Lovely. But also, not just that, right? All of the midfielders could score massive, gigantic, humongous, humongous, well, humongous points, right? As all of them have very good fixtures at the start, so it could very, very much pay off short term, you know? But also allow you to keep on grinding long term as well, as you can plan your team a little bit more with all the unknowns we don't know. But then to actually finish off the team, we have the uh, what attack, the W-A-T, with the Watkins, Antonio, and Doni. I just realised the other way in the graphics, isn't it? It's the out team. Uh, and I get <laughs> Watkins has three great fixtures to start with, with good creative players behind him. So, you know, all of the goals, all out attack, all of the goals. Antonio 
if fit, uh, that is the magical word, when he is fit, if he is fit, he is one of the best strikers in the league and honestly could go all of the goals against anyone. So yeah, get him in. And also, especially at the start of the season where he has a week-long rest, he should be fine to get all of them as well. And then Tony, at his price, he's just great value, isn't he? Playing in an attacking team with good fixtures and also on penalties. Yeah, he's still a good option. Chuck him in. So we've got the three forwards here who can score all of the points. The midfielders who definitely could get some points, right? Pro probably a couple in there, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then also the defenders who are, yeah, cheap. They're not amazing. And they're not quite sparkling with potential, right? But also on their day, could even keep up with some of the big boys, you know? You never know. You, know, you never know. <laughs> Meaning we are just going for it in this all-out attack team. We are probably going all-out just for the attack. With every single player being able to attack and get all of the attacking routines in you, yeah? Whilst also going more top-heavy in this team than most other FPL players' teams. So you have that advantage with you as well. So we've said this team is a little bit more flexible, right? As you can drop down to anybody you want and then spread out the funds as you want. And we've also said we are attacking more goals, which could actually get you more FPL points at the start of the season. But is a team like this... Actually a good idea, huh? Right, everybody get your magnifying glass out, get your checklist, and we'll actually go around and actually have a look if it is a good team, yeah, yeah? And we'll try and break it down if you should do something like this yourself. As you might be having a bit of a staring competition with this team, looking it straight in the eyes and being like, hang on, no, this is more dirty than Bacon Boy still up at 6 a.m. after all of the shots all the nights, right? It's absolutely disgusting, as you haven't got Trent, you haven't got Shaw, you haven't got Digne, and you are having to sell one of these big boys in the midfield who could end up scoring a lot of points next week, so you're always a bit scared to sell them, you know? Oh, shiver my timbers, I'm so scared. <laughs> but you know what? Even after all of these things, which are valid points here, yeah, I actually think this is a very good team, yeah? So let me whisper sweet nothing into your ear hole. Until you either agree with me or at least hear me out and be like, okay, not for me, but yeah, okay. <laughs> Where defenders in FPL have the potential to get some big boy points, right? You know, as you know, an attacking return and a clean sheet, yeah, it can get up there, right? But their ceiling is actually quite a bit low, you know? You're not going to see many defenders at all score a 15 to 20 pointer. And if they do it, they'll probably only do it once a season if they're lucky. Most defenders won't get double digit holes, right? As I feel like with most defenders, they just slowly grind the six pointer for the clean sheets here and there, you know? And they just slowly and gradually build up that points total, right? They get points, they get good points, but they're not all the way up here on every other week, you know? No, 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 no. Like, you do get the outliers who might score massive points, like a 15 point day in game week one from a centre back, right? But they end up doing nothing like that again for the entire season. So, what we actually see at the start of the season is that the lower priced defenders can actually match or sometimes even outscore some of the big boy defenders. And by, and by big boy, I mean the expensive ones. Just because their ceiling's less high, so they kind of stay together a bit longer, you know? So as the game weeks go through, you know, game week one, game week two, game week three, game week four, the big boy defenders, yeah, they might be ahead, but because their ceiling's not high and they're, they're not scoring amazing, amazing points, the cheaper defenders are actually still quite close behind them for a couple of weeks, right? And then eventually throughout the entire season, the premiums do get quite a bit more, but it's a bit more gradual, you know? It's not all out at once. So that's not to say you you should only go for cheap boys because they can kind of keep up, right? But what it is to say is just at the start of the season, you don't always reap the benefits of going for expensive defense, right? A cheap defense could even net you more points and also allow you to put your money in the attack, which, ah, that's what we've done here. Hey, hey, hey. As with defenders, I feel like they're a slow burner. Of course, they could get massive scores straight away, but across the board, then they kind of stay together a bit longer. But with attackers, it's usually quite a bit different, ah. Where obviously the cheaper boys like a Jack Harrison, a Jarrah Bowen, they could all keep up or even score more, right? But look at examples from last season. Salah, Hattrick game week one. Son, four goals against Southampton in game week two. It's usually a lot more likely for the big boy attackers to score big at the start, right? Just because they have that higher ceiling. They can go and get those three, four goals. A defender's probably not going to get three or four returns, right? So with the midfielders and the attackers, they just have a lot more potential and can get higher points at once. Again, just to reiterate, it obviously depends on the types of players, right? As a premium defender can we outscore a premium attacker, of course, yes. But if you look at it across the board and target the ones with the best fixtures, uh, like we've done with this team, then wowza, you could be on for a winner-winner chicken dinner because all of the points could be incoming from all of the goals you're about to get. So basically, what I'm saying is, if you have a lot more attackers, there's more potential to get a lot more points right at the start as the defenders are kind of close together, like the expensive ones and the cheap ones, they're kind of similar. But then with the attackers, you do see the better and the more expensive ones do score a lot more right at the start, you know? So to sum it up, we have a team that could produce a lot of points at the start, right? We have a higher ceiling in most of the players, meaning it could fruit shoot you up all the ranks if all the players score, right? As even though you have a higher ceiling and higher potential, it might not get you more points, but it could, right? It could. 
But then also with this team, you have that extra flexibility, like we said, where week by week, you could just take out one of the more expensive midfielders and spread that money across the rest of your team. But you can do very well at the start and then continue to do well by spreading out the money after and maybe getting in the more expensive defenders when you know where the cheap boys are so you can use that money elsewhere. So basically, if you go for something like this, I feel like you can get more out of your money at the start and then also be more flexible than other teams and you can keep on getting the best players ahead of everyone else as well. Uh, uh, oh wow, I honestly think I'm almost convincing myself to do a team like this. Uh, oh dear. <laughs> like, even if you don't want to go full out like this, like, you could drop down a Mares to, like, a Rafinha and upgrade one of the defenders to, like, a Robertson. Like, yeah, okay, fair enough. But a team like this, honestly, very much something to consider because if it goes your way, then you could have a very good start and be ahead of everyone else. Why would you not want that? Hmm, amazing. But let me know what you think about this team or strategy and all of that. Thank you for watching. And remember, <laughs> don't be a cheeky scrub. Subscribe to Nathan Bacon right now. <laughs>